mock exam one, problem one. Now let's first start with solving the problem one. It is about a shoe manufacturer who held a survey on customer satisfaction, and he has got 200 randomly chosen customers. And if you look at the data, there are five categories. 44 customers think the products are excellent. 62 customers think this is good. Well, 30 find it's average, and 40 find it's poor, and 24 find it's very poor. So these numbers are all the frequency falling into uh, different categories. It's not about some uh, the range, something like 10 up to 20, 20 up to 30. No, it's not about this. So this data is on group data. And if we want to visualize it, you'd better use the bar chart to show it, because this is qualitative data. And you can find for the qualitative data, we can have um, the mode. The most number occurs in that category, and that category will be our mode. And in this case, good, we have the most numbers. So good will be our mode. And because this is qualitative data, so we don't have mean. And if, if we want to find um, the median, we need to first define what is the location of our median. And we use the equation n plus 1 divided by 2 to define the location of our median, since we have in total 200 customers. So 200 plus 1 divided by 2, and 100.5. This is the location of our median. But before you find uh, your median, you still need to re uh, uh, reorganize your data. So for excellent, we have 44. And for good, we have 62. For average, we have got 30 which means from number 1 to number 44 should be excellent. And from number 45 to 62 plus 44, which is 106, this should be good. And our median location is 105, so it falls in that category. Therefore, our median should be good. If you want to use the graph to show the qualitative data, you can have the bar chart, like this. You can also have the pie chart, like this. But since the pie chart mostly used to represent the percentage, and in this case, it's not necessary to use the percentage, so we think that the bar chart is more appropriate. And for the third question, it's about levels of measurement. And for gender, this is a typical Uh, nominal variable because there are uh, two categories and there is no ranking between these two categories female and male and for the shoe size we took about shoe size in the Netherlands and you can have 36.5 you can also have 37 but the number in between 36.25 for example this is nonsense so that is why this number um, it is interval and discrete because all the number in between is not meaningful so we think this is discrete data and for the next one is the number of hours um, they work per day and it can be a ratio because it is about numbers and 
it is also continuous. Because all the number in between is meaningful. They can have that they only have got one hour. They can also have got a 1.5 hour or 1.75 hour. So all the number in between is meaningful. Then that will be continuous. And you can also have the true zero meaning. Because if on that day they haven't worked with these shoes, that means um, the number of hours is zero. So this zero is a true zero meaning. Therefore, it is ratio. And the number of shoes. The same as number of hours, you can have zero. And this is true zero meaning. Because on that day, if uh, in a year they haven't bought any shoes, then uh, the number is zero. So this is the true zero meaning. But it is discrete because you cannot have 3.5 shoes. You can also not have 3.75 shoes. You can only have either one shoes, two shoes, and several uh, pairs of shoes. So the last one is ratio and discrete. This is the explanation for problem one in the first mock exam.